of our vote cannot be overemphasized. And I'm asking, when will Nigerians vote out of conviction rather than out of fear? One of the common phrases one hears during election period amongst the electorate is, I don't want to waste my vote. For the average electorate, voting for a candidate not from the two dominant parties is a waste. Many do not realize that voting for a candidate just because one thinks that the candidate will be the one to win, rather than voting because the candidate is the most qualified, is the real waste. It seems that many are more interested in being part of the winning team and being euphoric for the win than in the governance that is to come from the candidate voted. To many, election is like being a fan of a football club. And what is most important is the euphoria of one's team winning. <laughs> That's what it is to them. While the winnings and the loss of a football club does not have a far-reaching effect on your life, that of election does. It is not enough that your candidate won. The capacity of the candidate to deliver good governance has far-reaching effect on your life and the generation unborn. So the real waste of vote is not choosing candidates based on their competence, character, and capacity. That is the real waste. As long as citizens are afraid to vote their conviction because they are afraid to be on the losing team, then fear will continue to be a deciding factor and people will continue to choose the so-called lesser evil. There is no less in evil. Evil is simply evil. It is time for Nigerians to leave behind the shackles of fear and dare to choose the best rather than lesser evil. It is time to begin to choose the most competent candidate rather than the candidate that is most likely to win. The competent candidates don't have structures. Their parties don't have structures is the statement often heard. Who or what is the structure? The people are the structure. You and I are the structures. And if we identify the candidates who are competent, we can begin to be their structures. It is like network marketing. We tell one person who tells another, and we begin to sell the candidates of competence rather than the candidates likely to win. We have to give something to get something. We need to donate to these competent candidates. So we do not let those who have looted our collective world to use that money to perpetuate themselves in office. We need to volunteer to be their agents and ensure we are their structures. All that is needed is a bit of sacrifice. And like they say, nothing good comes easy. If we do not take our destinies into our hands, we'll continue to be at the mercy of power brokers, who continue to use different slogans to whip up sentiments and give us the illusion of power in our hands. It is either fight against corruption or God for darism, or another catchy slogan. They have many that they will give us. The two major parties, they have no incentive to put forth candidates that are competent. They would rather put forth candidates they can control and continue business as usual. You have to make up your mind to leave the fear that have had you bound for over 20 years and ensure it is now business unusual. Yes, um, quite um, very catchy words uh, there for me. I, I, I completely, this has been my conviction, mm -hmm. but I also have a problem um, with uh, the political parties. Okay. Um, I had said this consistently to whoever cared to, to listen that uh, the people won't just come to you. You will have to go to the people. Yes, I always, you often hear of, ah, I don't want to waste my vote. If you as popular as you are, when you talk, people call you, oh, please come and intervene. Oh, where are the human rights lawyers? The day you come out to contest for election, they will tell you that you won't win, like Aisha had said, that uh, you don't have structures. But they forget that they are, they are your structure. That structure <laughs> is money. No, 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 no. Because they expect to, you to wait, breach their palms. The politicians, no, the politicians didn't just have money today or just have structures if the people didn't vote for them. Mm. 
It is the people that are the structures. So if when Mimiko won in, in Ondo, it is the people that voted for him. Under the Labour Party. Yes. Now that, you know, APC sees themselves as, oh, look, we're the stronghold in Edo, and PDP had won the election. It is the people that voted. It is the people that are those structures. And like she has said, it is when, um, like we say in Wari, uno takunu, mouth, ten mouths, mm. that, you know, structures, you build structures. But the problem I have with the political parties, like I said, is the fact that you can't sit down, the fringe parties, you can't sit down and expect and people expect to embrace you to because they are I, looking I for think, alternative. I Quickly, think we're assuming like, that they're sitting down. No, they are. They are. Take, for example, Edo. That's what I'm saying they are. Kinsley Mogalu contested the election in 2019. Feladuro Toye. These were big names, you know. But one would have expected. You didn't win. In Edo, you go to Edo as a politician. Go to Edo. Start to galvanize the people to support your candidate. What if they so didn't that, have any strong candidates in that place? How will you, you are a politician, even, who even, hope even to if be they are a not president? About backing a candidate, they, they have visible, opinions, yeah, yes, about with their topical opinions. issues that are going on in the polity. Lend a voice to it. So be a voice that people get to hear all the time, and you you are there in their memory. Don't wait till it is eight election. months to the next election. Then you stand up and, 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 and you start looking for Nigeria. You, you know, because you've been missing in action for the last three and a half years. That's yes, the problem. You, you can't just etch your, yourself in their the, mind all of which it Which is overnight. what we see the fringe parties, as you yes. call them, do all, all the time. Of, all of the time. I, I the also time. think. However, I think I want to lay the blame um, uh, with the people now. Even we, the people, just as Aisha said, are we voting out of fear or are we voting out of conviction? Sometimes, as she has said, it's because we just want to belong to the winning team. <laughs> Who you vote for, I don't know be Lagos. I don't know be Lagos. I don't know be Lagos. And gloat about it. And mm. gloat of, over it. But really, if you look at it, these two candidates, were they the best? Would we not, of the fringe parties, would, did I, we I have want to other ask people? You, you that is in the media, mm. name, apart any from these two one. candidates, name any other candidates. Well, I've, I, I was looking at them on TV, but I really never... You didn't see them. No, I saw you them. You have to. Aisha said something. You cannot wake up somebody who's pretending to be sleeping. It's Bam. deep. A candidate who is not asleep but pretending to be sleeping. You will tap him you, and tap you will, him and tap him. You will him. tap and tap and tap. Because he's not serious. But if a candidate is serious in an election... In 2016 Edo election, still the we saw the Abga, Abga candidate, Osaro Naiwu. Mm -hmm. He came out, he was very vociferous. Even the governor from um, Anambra came to support him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he could come a distant third. After the election, he went to sleep. Even immediately after the election, they consistently, you know, um, uh, what do you call it now? Give alternative to how government should be run. Like Abga, at the heard. national I level. Be in the face of, yeah. the, of people. the people. Let which was what Alajilai Mohammed did. Which was what PDP, For APC, which was what them PDP there. did in Edo State. Mm -hmm. Chief Dan mm -hmm. Obi consistently was on Oshomole's neck for eight years. Mm. You know, but when you don't, you just go to see, sleep. You wake up six months to a national election and you want uh, to be president uh, of Nigeria. Let, let me, if I, may, if I may just come in. Uh, I, I totally agree with you where you talk about the fact that some of these parties, they just they just stay by and some of these candidates just feel that at the end of the day, uh, it's when it's time for election that they will come and they are asking for the people to vote for them. But then at the same time, again, there's something that we do. We actually shame good people out of politics. We yes. shame competent people out of politics. You right. see people who are always talking about Nigerian issues, who are always talking about either state issues or whatever, when it's time for politics and they want to go into politics, they are shamed out of it. Oh, you know, what are you doing? You're supposed to be an activist. You're supposed to be this. You're supposed to be that. And you find that most times the people who are actually speaking on Nigerian issues, when we are talking about, you know, having, for example, the alternative candidates, we sideline them. We look for people who don't even care about the issues that are happening in Nigeria. Those are the people we are always propping up. So this right. is one major mm -hmm. issue. Another issue I would also like to talk about, you know, uh, Treasure uh, earlier said something about the structure being money. It's not really money. It's people. We need to understand that the people that are actually collecting money uh, during elections, they are not that many. But there are a lot of people who don't bother to come out to vote because they don't believe in the system. And if you can get enough of those people coming out to actually vote, there will be a major, uh, a major uh, you know, a change. 
And let me give you an example. How many votes, uh, how many people voted for somebody to be governor in Edo State? Less than 400,000 people. And I'm sure maybe there are over 400,000 people who didn't even bother to come out on that election day. These are some of the things that we need to do. At this moment, we have an unusual situation. Right. So we're supposed to yeah. praise. We're supposed to turn things up, upside okay. down. It's no longer a moment of uh, that we say, oh, let's just wait by this time. Whichever candidate comes in with this time. Let's begin, even we ourselves, look for these candidates right now. By now, we should know who are the people we want at the National Assembly, who are the people we want in all the states. I Taking over the discussions from us. And begin to it is your scripts. <laughs> it is your scripts. <laughs> it is your script, but you have done the discussion. You have done the dissecting. And um, well, uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> but I it's a, it's totally agree with it. Vote out of conviction, not fear. We all have the responsibility to vote out of conviction and not out of fear. I'm up next after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 